Hi everyone, welcome to The Witching Week. Today is episode number 33 and I am your host, Ren. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you all had a lovely Easter weekend. So I must admit, today nearly didn't happen. I I feel like I've got a hangover. I haven't got a hangover. I don't drink. I am basically on the edge of a massive Emmy flare. So we have been, I want to say that we've been busy, but in all honesty, it's just like normal activity. But we had my two stepdaughters for the weekend. So for four days over the Easter weekend, and believe it or not, that is just enough to make me really ill. And then the day after the weekend on the Tuesday, we were up really early and went down to Glastonbury. So there was something we needed to get done down there. So we went around the shops as well. We had a night in a hotel and we came back Wednesday afternoon. And ever since, I have just been feeling really, really poorly. So please bear with me. I'm probably going to be stumbling over my words a little bit today. I'm going to try my absolute best. And this is quite good exercise for my brain in that respect. But I've got loads to tell you about. So yeah, get a drink and maybe get some incense on and let's get comfortable. I Today, I'm not on any tea. I'm just on the old, good old fashioned water, which is mainly what I drink. And yeah, I didn't feel like tea today. So yeah, cheers everyone. And today I am burning some Satya Namaste incense, one of the brown box ones. It's really nice. It's not too dissimilar to Nag Champa. So if you like Nag Champa, you'll probably like this one. So yeah, so we had we had Easter. I hope that was lovely for you. We had amazing weather here. It was like warm and sunny. And for the first time in ages, I felt really comfortable in my body and I could just enjoy life. I wasn't thinking all the time, gosh, I'm so cold. So that was really nice. But of course now we're into April and we have April showers. We truly do. One minute we've had like bright sunshine and the next minute it's been like black skies and then a really, really heavy downpour, which is really inconvenient in many ways when you're trying to get things done or you want to go somewhere. But it's quite spectacular and I must admit I actually quite enjoy it. So it's looking beautiful out there today. We've got blue skies. It's been quite cold at night again. Um, this, it's really, really interesting doing these videos and watching the seasons change. It's, it's really tuned me into what's going on and some years are really different to others. And uh, like I've said in previous videos, I think because we haven't really been able to use our central heating this year, we've really, really felt what winter can be like and it means that these warm sunny days are just all the lovelier like when the sun comes out and it's warm and I'm not needing my massive coat I'm, I just feel so overjoyed so yeah so we went down to Glastonbury then I want to tell you all about this for the people that follow from the UK yeah I'm sorry you, you guys have probably been to Glastonbury and this might not be quite so interesting for you but I think for other, other people from around the world it's it's quite an interesting place to describe so it's a town in southwest England it's in the county of Somerset and it has plenty of ancient and medieval sites around it so we have Glastonbury Tor which is a large hill with a building at the top the Fae are said to live in, in the actual hill of the Tor. We have the Chalice Well. So we've got a red and what's called the Red and White Spring in Glastonbury. So these are quite close to the Tor. So you've got the Red and White um, Springs. You've got the International Peace Gardens that those are set within. You have the Abbey, which was built in the 8th century. And then the pub that we stayed in, it has 14 bedrooms and it was, it's the oldest purpose built pub I don't know about in the UK as a whole but certainly in that area and it was built in the 14th century so really really old and there's a tunnel that goes from this pub under the ground to the abbey it's not far from the abbey it's just you know like a minute walk it's quite close but it, the pub's in the town and then the abbey the entrance to the abbey is in the town but that's set a little bit back so they're very very close but interestingly there are these tunnels that run underneath and it's a really interesting building it was built for pilgrims that were visiting the abbey and for other visitors so it's like a coaching inn and it has this spiral 
staircase that goes up and it goes down to the cellar as well and that's where the tunnels run from so very very interesting we stayed in the, what was called the Henry VIII room and it wasn't until we were le- reading the information board before we left that apparently Henry VIII actually stayed in that room and he watched out the window as Glastonbury Abbey was destroyed during the dissolution of the monasteries in 1539 so quite incredible history there and there are the, there are still some ruins of the abbey you can go and look at those you can see what an impressive building it was and in the pub in the restaurant and in the sort of like the hotel restaurant there are these beautiful murals and pictures that have been painted and drawn on the walls and there are some interesting characters that are associated with Glastonbury that they've depicted and there's a really interesting man called Frederick Bly Bond. And I don't know much about him other than the fact that he excavated many of the ruins of Glastonbury. And he did so. He was led by the spirits of monks that were at the Abbey. And as soon as the Church of England found out about this, he was relieved from his duties. He was stopped and he uncovered many, many things. So it does make you wonder. He was being led by the spirits of these monks that used to live and work there. So that was really, really lovely. I bought a few things from the shop, so I will be doing a video on that. I'm going to do a Glastonbury haul. Um, I did buy some books as well. I didn't think I would get any more books this year, certainly not this half of the year, but I'll show you in that video but I just wanted to show you this one and this is just like such a perfect book for me and what I'm interested in. It's called Vickery's Folk Flora and it is an A to Z of the folklore and uses of British and Irish plants. So as you can hear, I'm sort of like falling over my words a bit, but we'll, we'll keep going. We're going to keep going. So that was really lovely. We had a really great trip. It was a bit of a whirlwind. But it was just so nice to get down there. Um, it was quite busy. I did manage to get some footage. I think my video, I, I plan to do a video on Glastonbury, but I didn't do any of the main sites. I just sort of went around the shop. So I think I'll include those clips within my Glastonbury hall, goodies hall. So... On the way home, we saw the most magnificent rainbow going back to those April showers. There were some incredible rainbows. And as you know, they're an optical illusion. You have light refra- refracting or reflecting or dispersing in water droplets. And it creates these amazing um, phenomenons. And I wanted to read a little bit more about rainbows. They've always been a bit of a fascination for me. And of course, the Norse saw them as Bifrost. So that was the rainbow bridge that went be- between Midgard, which is Earth, and Asgard, which was the realm of gods. They, in Abrahamic traditions, they represent a covenant with God, um, the promise that the world will not be destroyed via flood water. So um, I think that's interesting. And for me, they are an omen, a sign that everything is going to be okay. And in my personal life, I've quite a bit of upheaval going on at the moment. There's quite a few things that are, we're not sure which way they're going to go. And it's quite stressful at the moment. So having left Glastonbury and we were talking about a few issues in the car and things that I've been stressing over and worrying about, and we saw these most magnificent rainbows and um, several of them on the way home so yeah have a read about those that's really interesting and check out Glastonbury and if you ever travel to the UK and you want to go somewhere that's full of witchcraft shops and we're talking a whole high street and several roads around that absolutely full you know witchy clothes witchy fashion jewellery books things to decorate your home with i mean it is absolutely incredible there's a couple of other little places in the uk that are like that so like burley for example in the new forest but nothing on a par with glastonbury so i think many people who've never heard of glastonbury or haven't been or live outside of the country they think of the festival and glastonbury festival is held out of the town in some fields at a farm but Glastonbury town centre itself is well worth um, a look and you need a couple of days I would say for the first time you really really need a couple of days and yeah it's just incredible and it's small enough that you can walk around so well worth a visit if you've never been before. 
And so thinking about crystals uh, and glass and all those kind of things, I, it made me think, oh, what's the best stone for April? Like we're well into April now. And apparently it's diamond. I didn't know this. Um, and its name comes from the Greek Adamos. Adamas, I'll put it on the screen, which means invincible, which when you think of the properties of diamond makes perfect sense. And a lot of the mythology around diamonds is connected to this idea of invincibility. So I've been thinking about crystals a lot this, this week and with my trip to Glastonbury and looking at all the amazing crystals there. And so I thought I'd look up diamond and it's related to love, obviously, when we think of a diamond engagement ring and it's about promoting balance and harmony in relationship, but it's also about strength and courage and that invulnerability. And apparently it's also very good for mental health issues and nervous conditions. So obviously it's a bit of an expensive one to buy. You're not likely to have a diamond tumble stone carried in your handbag, but you know, maybe some jewellery. So it's well worth thinking about. And also um, when I got my engagement ring, which is amethyst and two diamonds, I wanted either like lab grown diamonds or diamonds that were guaranteed to be conflict free. So because there is quite a few ethical issues surrounding that. So if you do get some diamonds, think about that. But yeah, what else is going on for April? Well, this is quite an exciting time in terms of the outside world. So we have the wild garlic out at the moment. It does depend on your geographical location. So Generally, it's out and it's grown and it's ready to be used between mid-February and kind of the end of April. Certainly where I am here in the Midlands it and, and the particular place that I go to, because you've got to think about light and things like that, um, it tends to be the end of April. So it's most likely out now. I need to go and have a look. And I didn't know that wild garlic, even though I've read about it for years and used it, and this is the lovely thing about continuously researching and continuously reading about the things that interest you. I found out that it's actually a member of the Amaryllis family. So, you know, those plants you see in Tesco supermarket where you can buy them and they grow really tall and they have a big exotic flower on top, usually like a bright red or a pink or something. That's an Amaryllis and it has a beautiful big bulb. And wild garlic is a member of the Amaryllis family. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And it is a really, really versatile plant. You can use the flowers as a salad garnish. You can use the leaves in either a raw way or you can cook them, of course, like spinach. You can use the stems like chives and the pods you can either pickle, so a bit like capers, or you can use the seed pods and sprinkle them on salads. The bulbs can be used like onions, but please don't dig up the bulbs because the plant will not return. You know, it's a perennial, it comes back each year. And so I think legally as well, you have to have permission of the land owner to dig up bulbs, but we don't really don't want to do that. So just take the leaves and the flowers and the stems. Uh, they're known as ramsons, bear garlic, bear leek, wood, wood garlic. It's got, hun well, probably not hundreds of names, but it's got a lot of names. And there are so many recipes online. So I think the most common one is wild garlic pesto but lots of people use it for soups. You can make like lovely cheesy breads. You can make garlic bread with it. You can make garlic butter. Um, I think nettle and wild garlic soup is quite a common one for this time of year because there are obviously lovely fresh young nettle heads out at the moment. So that's a really good one. And then of course, at the same time as the wild garlic, well not the same time, but at the later part of the season of the wild garlic, we also have the bluebells out. So these tend to pop out last couple of weeks of April or last sort of week of April into May. So we had a little peek at our local bluebell wood last week and there are a few flowering but not enough to create a carpet of purple or blue um they it's all very green out there at the moment and it's just the odd plant that has has gone so i absolutely adore the bluebells they they're just they've got a fascinating history as well so if you have five minutes have a read 
about bluebells and they are called Hyacinthoides non scripta and but they ha were renamed to that in the 70s so before that they were called endomion I've written it down because I want to make sure I pronounce it right endomion non scripta and endomion was a character who was lulled into eternal sleep by Celine and the reason she did this is because she didn't want him to get old and die and so there are some really lovely folklore surrounding them. They're also quite connected to the Fae. They ring the bluebells when they want to summon their king to a gathering. And if a human being hears that ringing, then that basically is a death knell for them. So I've said to my kids before, like, be careful in the bluebells, because if you go walking in the bluebell woods, then you might hear them ringing the bells. And so you may either die or you might be taken. So we enjoy those stories. The kids are big enough to be able to handle those. But they're everywhere in the UK. And as far as I know, they, they go quite far out into Europe as well. But we don't have them in Orkney or Shetland. So those guys right up at the top are missing out on those and they're just so beautiful. So I'm really excited about that. And by all accounts, trips to Bluebell Woods have been a thing for many, many generations. In certain areas of the UK, um, I can't remember which area it said it was, but there was a train that would specifically go to, to see the Bluebells and would travel through Bluebell Woods. So I'd love to know where that is. I would love to take that train ride sounds absolutely wonderful. I thought we'd talk about magical and celebratory activities for April into May. So I've mentioned two very obvious things there. Get some wild garlic, make something with wild garlic or just go and see it. And you cannot, you, I mean, they say that some people get wild garlic mixed up with lords and ladies. Uh, which is arum, I think it's maculatum, I think is how you say it, my brain's not working today. Um, but the leaves are very, very different. So like always with foraging, make sure that you are certain before you pick something and that you're certain before you ingest something. But I don't really think you can go wrong with that if you've done your research. And also the smell, there isn't, it's absolutely unmistakable. And also if you touch the leaf, smell your fingers, smell the leaf. It is a very, very pungent smell, very garlicky, very oniony. So you can't really get that one wrong, to be honest. So yeah, go and see some more garlic. Beautiful little sta uh, starly, uh, star flowers, um, little white flowers, really, really beautiful. Uh, go and see some bluebells. That's the next thing on my list. Uh, but be careful, obviously, because of the fairies. Go to a May Day celebration. So we've got Beltane coming up. Dance the Maypole if you can. There are lots and lots of places and communities bringing these things back now, which is absolutely wonderful. Have a fire. Obviously, Beltane is one of the four Celtic fire festivals. Tell some stories, and that's a great thing to do when having a fire. Honour the ebb and flow of life. Obviously, we've swung back the other way now from being in the sort of darkest part of the year. But after Beltane, we got Litha and, you know, it's going to swing back the other way again. So it's really, really important, I think, that we make the most of life and we observe. We observe the world around us and we observe our own cycles. It's so important. Uh, make a flower crown. Make a flower crown and decorate the altar. So... Yeah, I'll be covering some of that um, perhaps in the next episode. I may not be able to do next week. I'm going to let you guys know. And then that doesn't leave us very long before Beltane after that. But I might do a separate video on those kind of things anyway. I just wanted, before we do some cards, I just wanted to say happy birthday to Sarah from Hairs by Lamplight. I shared some of her products in one of my earlier episodes. And... We, where I've just been like incredibly busy with the children and then going away and I was actually really struggling even in Glastonbury with my Emmy so I just did not get around to sending her a text so happy birthday Sarah I hope you had a lovely weekend I hope you had a gorgeous gorgeous day um so yeah let's do some cards and see what energy message what energy reading what feel we have for the week ahead and let me know in the comments, guys, how your week has been, how your Easter has been, and how you are getting prepared for Beltane. Some of you have let me know already what you get up to. 
um, which is absolutely fantastic. I love hear, hearing what you do. So I'm just feeling drawn to pick out three cards today. Um, we have got Wheel of Fortune. That's popped up a lot, hasn't it, recently? We've got the Moon and we have got the Seven of Pentacles. And so the message here is, again, that you know, what must, what goes up must come down. If you've been feeling recently like, you know, you're really unsure of everything and you're feeling stressed at the way things are going and perhaps things have not been going well at all, the wheel will right itself, you know. If things have been rubbish, things will get better. Um, this card talks very much about destiny and karma. And so even when things are, you know, a bit pants, just... Just go with it. Just trust in the process because, you know, things will be okay ultimately. Every storm that you've ever ridden, every really, really difficult period that you've been through, even at the time if you felt like you weren't going to survive it, you always did. We always do. And I think there is the encouragement here that not everything is always as it seems as well. The moon talks about things that are in the shadows and don't have the full light of the sun cast on them. We can't always see things for what they are. And this is talking about situations here in this particular reading. So don't don't worry. And my advice would be is if, if you're working hard at something, whether that be a job, a relationship, a situation, whatever it is, your the fruits of your labour are going to pay off and just hang on in there, you know, wait for the bigger picture. At the moment, you might only be able to see the sort of the tiniest details of things. You might be so hyper-focused on this situation that you cannot see the bigger picture. So I, I believe that, you know, if, if times are rubbish, then they're going to swing back round and become good again. And sometimes that works the other way as well. If you've been, if you've been sort of riding along on this amazing, you know, energy and moment, then at some point that will change. That is the nature of life. But that doesn't seem to be the message here. It's more like, you know, if things seem utterly rubbish at the moment, they are going to get better. And I kind of feel like this is a message for me in a way as well, as well as you guys. Although I always make the intention when I pick the cards out and I do a bit of shuffling before as well, before I record this, I tune in and make the intention that it's for you guys. But this is a community, so it can be for me as well. Um, I think I might just pick one other card out just to, just to sort of add to that. Um, let's go for the residual card. Let's go for the card at the bottom. And that is the Knight of Wands. So again, I think this came out last week and he is who I call the Indiana Jones card. So he is saying, be bold, be courageous, you know, go for it, have no fear. So in, in related to this situation, I think it just means just continue, continue working hard, continue focusing on the goal. Don't worry too much about the way things seem at the moment. Um, you know, there are improvements and lighter times on the horizon so i think we're all feeling that a little bit at the moment and certainly from you know my friends and the people close to me i think it's been it's been a long winter it's been tough and i think many of us are facing challenges that we didn't see maybe a couple of years ago um, much of that is a result of the pandemic and brexit and war in ukraine and things like that it's a very expensive time for people a lot of people are struggling right now so yeah we, we are we're moving towards better times even if that's slowly but this was about the week ahead so just some thoughts there for you to consider so I'm wishing you a lovely, lovely weekend. I am going to take myself back off to bed, I think, um, and get some rest so that I'm a bit more with it for the next video. But yeah, I'm wishing you a wonderful week. Thanks for being here. If you made it this far, then very well done. Uh, look after e each other and yourselves. You usually do that the other way around. Look after yourselves and each other. And I'm sending lots of love and blessings. All right. Take care. Bye.